good day to all of you. We shall now start this course on switched mode power conversion. It is a 40 hour lecture series. It will be handled by two people. The first 18 lectures will be handled by Professor V. Ramnarayanan. From the 19th lecture onwards till the 40th lecture, it will be handled by me. The first 18 lectures will handle the basics, review the primitive converters, discuss about the passive component C, L and the switches, power semiconductor switches and introduce you to the uh, basic converters and the and the design examples of few converters. Later on, I will cover topics on modeling and control aspects related to switched mode power converters. So, I shall uh, discuss those uh, topics from the 19th class onwards after uh, you have got sufficient background on the principles of switched mode power conversion. This is the first of the uh, 40 lectures uh, that will follow on switched mode power conversion. So, today we begin the first lecture which is an introduction to this topic of switched mode power conversion. In most uh, practical uh, systems, you have two aspects. On one side, we have a source and on the other side, we have a sink or more commonly we understand it by the term load. Power has to flow from source to the sink and sometimes from the sink to the source like in the case of the battery, if the load were a battery and then it was getting charged and when it is discharged it could also flow in the reverse direction. So, this is the situation in most of the practical cases where we have sources and loads and we need to connect these two together. On the source side, we could have battery you could have the grid or the mains you could have the solar photovoltaics any ac generator so on. And on the load side, you could have a resistive load, heater type of load, you could have inductive magnetic loads, electromagnetic relays, electromagnetic machines, motors, DC motors, AC motors and you could also have capacitive type of loads. many applications which are used for heating application, lighting application, mass transport, energy transport, these kind of things. Now, these loads are applications 
demand voltage and current with some constraints on it. It should be 230 volts plus minus 10 percent, it should be 5 volts plus minus so much percent, it should be 3.3 .3 volts or it should be 15 volts, 12 volts so on. The loads have been pre-designed for a specific input voltage. However, the sources may be designed to give specific standard voltages like 230 volts, AC could be 12 volts, DC or it could be 0 0.5 volts from the photovoltaic, things like that one. So, how do we match on the one side uh, the source voltages and on the other side uh, the load voltages which could be 5 volts, 15 volts, plus minus uh, or it could even be 230 volts or it could be 110 volts. Many of these um, loads have these kind of predefined voltages. So, if you have a source which is 230 volts AC and you need um, a need to connect it to a load which is 5 volts, then they are not compatible. So, you need to make them compatible, you need to make the source and the sink voltages compatible and that is where in between you have an interface box and this is a power interface. And the job of the power interface is to make the voltage at the input compatible or connect to the voltage at the output which is the load side voltage. So, the load side voltage and the source side voltages are interface are connected by means of this power interface such that incompatible voltages, incompatible source and sinks can also be connected together. So, that is the objective of this power interface and what is this power interface? That is the scope of discussion for the entire course. Now, let us say we have a source and let us categorize it broadly into two possible categories. One is that the source is a DC source, second it could be an AC source, these are two possibilities. And on the load side, you have two possibilities again, it could accept a DC of some amplitude or it could accept AC and our job is to make a power interface and this is the power interface. So, if we give from the source a DC input and we get a DC output, then it is called a DC DC converter. So, other possibility is we have a DC and 
we get out an AC because the load may be an AC. You are using a battery and you need to drive a um, AC fan or AC motor. So, the power interface would do the job of getting out an AC in which case this is called a DC to AC converter or uh, more popularly known as inverter. Now, let us take the option you have an AC and you get out a DC. You have an AC input maybe from a 230 volt supply, grid supply and the output of 5 volts or 15 volts DC supplying it to a DC load which case you have an AC to DC converter more popularly called as the rectifier. And finally, you have the other possibility of giving an AC input and getting an AC output. So, you have AC to AC converter. So, these are the four major categories of converters that you can envisage, you can see. And we will be focusing mainly on DC to DC, DC, DC converter, only one among the four. So, the DC, DC converter, all about it, its introduction, the analysis, the way you go about synthesizing, designing and designing the controller, all those will be discussed in uh, the course of this uh, 40 hour lecture course. Now, if you take the DC, DC converter, you have the source which is a DC, you have the sink or the load which needs a DC input at some voltage V naught the source is at some voltage V in. We need to interface the source and the load which may have incompatible voltages, different amplitudes of the DC V in amplitude may be different, V naught amplitude may be different. We need to interface this by this DC, DC converter. Now, the moment you pass through a converter, the power that is fed at the input P in is equal to V in into I in, let us say, and the power that is coming at the output P naught, which is equal to V naught I naught, there is an input current associated with this coming out of the source, there is an in output current I naught associated with the load, load current there will be some loss, P loss. So, if you 
put in these equations P in the input power should supply the output of course plus the loss component. So, the efficiency is P naught by P in or P naught by P naught plus the loss component of the power. The whole focus here is to see that this goes towards 0 such that efficiency is 1 or 100 percent in terms of percentage. So, to make the loss 0, the concept of switched mode power conversion is employed. The switched mode power conversion basically uses the following concept. So, let us say you have the source, you have the load, now the source is at V in instead of having a linear device inside, let us say you have some kind of a switch device which will either go on or off. The reason being that the power loss across this P loss should tend to 0. So, when will P loss tend to 0? Either when this series element is having R the series element has an impedance R which tends to infinity in which case current I is equal to 0 and the volt and the drop across the element is negligible. Other case is when the impedance is tending to 0 and the voltage across the series element is 0 and then also the P loss is 0. So, we would like to have the series element as a switch such that it has only these two states R infinite or 0, where in both the cases the P loss is 0, in an ideal sense of course. And this is followed by some kind of a filtering with non-dissipative elements like inductor and capacitor and the filtered output is the V naught that is given to the load. So, this is basically the concept that will be employed uh, throughout. You will be using a switch which can take only these two states and the loss is minimal and you will be using filters based on inductors and capacitors because they are non-lossy and this together composes composed together is the power interface and as this is DC to DC uh, matching and it is called a DC to DC converter.
So, this is essentially what we will be uh, trying to discuss in the course of uh, this um, uh, these 40 hour lecture series. We have sources DC source and we have a load which expects DC voltage and we want to match the source to the load by means of this power interface and the power interface in order to have minimum loss will be composed of switch and filter elements. The filter elements are non-dissipative, non-resistive type and therefore, overall the loss of the power interface will be minimum. So, how we go about building the different circuit topologies? What are the components that go to make up these um, uh, uh, power interface? That is the switch, which is normally a power semiconductor switch. How to design the magnetics for the inductors and the capacitance? The analysis, the equations and the design, how we go about doing the design of the various topologies. So, this would be the focus of the course. Let me uh, brief you now about go about the course and what is the sequence in which we will be uh, discussing. So, first uh, the topic of uh, first, uh, in the topic of the switch mode power conversion, the AC to DC rectifier will be handled because most of the cases you may not have uh, the DC um, directly available to you. Uh, most of the time, the source is uh, a, uh, coming from the grid or the mains, which is AC and that needs to be converted into DC. So, therefore, AC DC rectifier is employed. So, very briefly uh, the rectifier will be introduced uh, such that you will be able to get the initial DC input voltage in many of the cases. Um, simple rectifiers based on SCR will be explained. However, notice that SCR is a switch, a power semiconductor switch. The diode is a switch, a power semiconductor switch. The BJT or the bipolar junction transistor, the MOSFET field effect transistor, the IGBT, they are all power semiconductor switches. Even though I am starting here with a um, uh, rectifier based on SCR, silicon control rectifier, we will not be discussing much about this SCR switch. Most of the discussion in future classes will be based on controlled switches, where you can control the switch on state, on to off and off to on, both, both the transitions are controllable. That is like the BJT, the MOSFET and the IGBTs. These are the switches that will dominate in the classes to come. However, the SCRs are good uh, devices that can be used for this uh, rectifier application and uh, uh, this is nothing but a simple rectifier circuit. You have an AC input, the AC is uh, rectified by the SCR uh, and uh, controlled rectification and given to the output. Um, this will be followed by a discussion on what are the different types of switches that we would like to employ the power semiconductor switches and uh, have a look at what is an ideal switch. And to understand about the idealness of the switch, the ideal nature of the switch, the requirement that we want, it is done with the help of the IV characteristic. This is called the static characteristic. Uh, you see here during the uh, off state, the uh, switch should be able to withstand voltage both positive or negative. And during the on state, when the voltage across the switch is 0, the switch should be able to carry current both positive or negative. But uh, remember that uh, none of the practical switches will be able to have all this four quadrant operation. Uh, 
they are limited to few quadrants which we will be discussing in the course. But uh, this is one of the points that we will be uh, trying to touch upon the switch and the nature of the switch will be initially discussed. And uh, while discussing the switch, we will be talking about the IV characteristics, where the on state and the off state comes, where is the active uh, region and uh, uh, what are the dynamics involved in the switch. You see that uh, no switch, ideally we would like that uh, the transition from off state to the on state and the on state to the off state occurs at in zero time instantaneously. However, no practical switch will uh, be able to achieve such instantaneous uh, transitions. They will have a finite rise time or a finite fall time and uh, uh, we need to discuss uh, these uh, transition switch transitions they are called the switching characteristics it is very important because during the time when they are transiting the voltage and the currents through the switches are not um, uh, are finite uh, unlike in uh, the fully on condition where the voltage is zero the fully off condition the current is zero and the power losses are minimal but during the transition both the voltage and the current is present and the uh, losses are uh, non-zero. These are called the switching losses. So, you need to understand the characteristic of the switch particular switch during switching on and switching off in the presence of inductive loads, in the presence of resistive loads or capacitive loads things like that one. Um, then while uh, discussing on the switches. Uh, uh, in order to address the issue of switching transitions, turn on and turn off, the stress on the device is maximum during turn on and turn off because we uh, see that there is loss during that time and not only that there are the electrical stresses. Uh, during turn off, the voltage stress across the switch if there is an inductor present there will be a huge voltage kick which can stress the device and during turn on there could be parasitic capacitance across the device which will try to have a huge current through the device. So, you need to de-stress the device using turn on and turn off 8 circuits called the snubber circuits which snubs the uh, stresses. So, these are called the switching 8 circuits they will be discussed the turn on snubbers, turn off snubbers. And uh, this is uh, one aspect that will be discussed in the course of the uh, in the course of the discussion on switch mode converters. Uh, then, after discussing about the switches, uh, before we actually go to the converters, uh, a brief discussion will be held on prior art. What uh, people were doing uh, to interface the source and the load before the advent of the switched mode. Uh, power converters. So, people were using linear uh, regulators or the linear power interfaces and um, uh, we shall briefly study about these uh, such that we will be able to appreciate uh, the advantages of the switched mode converters over the um, uh, uh, linear converters. We then come to the uh, discussion on inductors. Uh, the uh, passive components inductors and the capacitors. So, we will take up the uh, 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 inductors first, try to understand uh, how uh, understand it first from the Faraday's principles V is equal to L d i by d t V is equal to N d 5 by d t and then try to go a bit inside the inductors and see look at it from the uh, magnetic properties and how the magnetic and the electrical properties are interrelated. Uh, this is very crucial because uh, the inductors will have to be designed by you and they will have to be wound by you on a core for specific applications. They are not available off the shelf and so it is crucial to the design of the whole switch board power conversion. Uh, so, the various uh, magnetic 
uh, course that are available and how we will go about doing the uh, design using the area product approach. All this will be um, addressed uh, when we are discussing on the inductors and ultimately to go towards a practical design and implementation. So, this is one major important topic that you need to understand not only the inductors while we are touching upon the magnetic later on we would also uh, initially we will talk on the inductors and later on uh, further down in the course we will also talk on the transformers and uh, how we would uh, um, uh, use these transformers in switched mode converters high frequency transformers uh, in a way which will uh, uh, which will give additional degrees of freedom in uh, making the input and the output more compatible. They also will be based on the Faraday's laws V is equal to n by n d phi by d t the fundamental Faraday uh, principles. So, this will be followed by a discussion on capacitors. Uh, the capacitors are energy storage elements like the inductors while the inductors store the kinetic energy that is in terms of the flow the current half L i square. So, the current uh, uh, the flow of current by virtue of it uh, by virtue of its flow uh, uh, the energy that is stored is called the kinetic energy and that is where the inductors come into the picture and uh, the capacitor store the potential energy half C V square uh, by virtue of storing the charges ac uh, across uh, dielectric elements. The storage in the capacitors are discussed and uh, the various properties of uh, and the non-idealities in the capacitors are also uh, discussed in the course. Uh, this is once we have discussed all the components of the switched mode converters, uh, the components meaning the switches, the power semiconductor switches like the BJTs, the MOSFETs, the IGBTs and the diodes, its static characteristics and the dynamic of the switching characteristics. Uh, then the passive, conver passive components like the inductors and the capacitors and of course, the transformers we are ready to uh, start discussing on the topologies of the converters. So, we start we begin by uh, discussing uh, primitive simple converters DC DC converters. So, a primitive voltage converter voltage to current converter will be discussed. Uh, this lays the groundwork for uh, the more uh, practical and advanced uh, converters to come up. The primitive converters will lead to three fundamental converters, the basic power converters that is what we call them. Uh, you have uh, the buck converter here or the step down converter, the input voltage will be stepped down to a lower value. Uh, lower output voltage. This is uh, one basic topology. The second topology here is the boost converter. The input voltage is boosted up to a higher voltage here. So, this is the boost converter. See that this is this is called a primitive converter topology. Uh, a single pole double throw switch along with the inductor in the pole, the primitive converter. Um, uh, another uh, configuration is uh, the buck boost converter. The input voltage can be either stepped down or stepped up in this converter by adjusting the times at which the pole is at this throw or at this throw. Right. So, these three converters are called the three basic converter the buck boost, buck boost variants. And based on these three, you have many derived varieties and derived converters, both uh, non-isolated and isolated. The buck boost converter, also called as the flyback converter, is a very uh, popular converter, which we will discuss uh, much later. Many converters are derived from this uh, topology. Flyback converter, isolated flyback converter is one such 
and it has uh, um, uh, a pretty good uh, efficiency too. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, one of the topics that will be discussed. Uh, you also have other topics, uh, other topologies of the converters, the forward converter, wherein the output side the is uh, filtered. So, uh, the uh, uh, switching um, uh, the EMI and the EMC at the output side will be reduced, much reduced. The switching components, the switching ripple on the output will be smaller. You also have isolation, galvanic isolation between output and the input. Okay. So, this is one type of uh, topology and many derivatives out of it, which we will be de dealing with forward converter, the push pull converter. Uh, again, push, push pull converter is another derived version of the forward converter or the buck converter. Uh, the push pull converter uh, is uh, uh, then uh, leads to the half bridge converter which is again another derived version of the forward converter, which is another derived version of a buck converter, the basic converter and then you have the full bridge converter, wherein you have uh, many other advantages as we will be discussing in the class. So, these variants of the um, uh, basic converters will definitely be the practical variants will be uh, dealt with in detail both in uh, analyzing, modeling and uh, design. Uh, the next topic would be on uh, an interesting part which is called the discontinuous mode operation. So, the inductor current, so inductor we said was a storage element which stores uh, energy, the kinetic energy by virtue of the current flowing through it as half L i square. So, if, if the in every cycle the entire energy in the inductor is removed and transferred to the load, then you, uh, uh, you the current here uh, will go down to 0 like this and the current becomes discontinuous. Uh, then such a um, state is called the discontinuous conduction mode. When only part of the energy is removed, then the current does not reach to 0 it hovers above 0 and the current flow in the inductor is continuous, then that is called the continuous conduction mode. So, initially we will be discussing uh, mainly the continuous conduction mode operation, which will be later now followed by discontinuous conduction mode operation. There are many advantages in the discontinuous conduction mode operation too, especially uh, in many practical circuits we do employ the DCM mode of operation. So, this will be discussed in some detail later on in the course. Uh, this will be followed by um, uh, another important topic that is modeling. See, after understanding the operation of the converters, uh, one should then understand how to go about modeling the uh, converters. The reason that you need to model the converters is that uh, a mathematical representation of the converter will lead to better control controller design. You need to close the loop and a controller needs to be designed such that the output voltage is controlled. So, uh, the plant which is the DC DC converter will be modeled and a mathematical representation of it will be brought out. And then using that mathematical representation, the controller will be designed and uh, used for controlling the uh, uh, some variable, either it will be the output voltage or input current in the unity power factor um, uh, type uh, converter cases, things like that. Uh, so, briefly we will be discussing about uh, the nonlinearities, a plant which is nonlinear and what is the operating point and the operating point swings in a nonlinear way, how we go about linearizing it, what are the principles used in linearizing and then trying to extract the linearized mathematical representation of the DC DC converter. So, these issues will be dealt with and we will try to also discuss about the state space representation and try to bring the uh, plant 
uh, which is the DC DC converter in a standard form uh, 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 in this uh, state space form x dot is equal to a x plus b u y is equal to c x plus d u form called the state space representation such that it becomes amenable for the controller design uh, portion uh, of the uh, system. Um, uh, not to get worried here, uh, we shall go in a step by step approach on how to identify the states, how to obtain the state uh, equation, the dynamic equation and from the dynamic equation how to go uh, about obtaining the state equation all these things we will try to discuss in a systematic and step by step way uh, and try to obtain the mathematical model of the converter of any converter for that matter. So, you should be able to uh, uh, get the mathematical model of any given converter by up, um, by taking the uh, generic approach that we will discuss in the uh, in these lectures. Now, circuit averaging method is a important technique that we will be employing for switched mode converter circuits because the switched mode converter circuits you will see that the uh, circuit can be split into uh, two or three modes. Uh, when the switch is connected to one of the throws, when the pole is connected to one of the throws, the circuit is in one form. When the pole is connected to another throw, then the circuit is in uh, a different form. So, it is a different circuit. So, the um, uh, state uh, equation model for both the modes are taken and then the state is averaged and that is called the circuit averaging method. How we go about doing this, uh, we will be discussing in, in quite some detail as, uh, as we go through the classes. And we shall obtain many different types of models, uh, we call the large signal model. Uh, which is the model where the operating point can swing throughout the range. Uh, it could be non-linear also, need not necessarily be linear. We have the steady state model where uh, during steady state when there are no dynamics, uh, uh, there are no uh, uh, the, all the uh, deviations with respect to time become 0 and what is the steady state model My very much used for design purposes, design of the converter to rate the switches, rate the components and then you have the small signal model which is used primarily for controller design uh, because the small signal model gives ideas about uh, what happens when the operating point swings in the neighborhood of the nominal operating point, where what are the dynamics involved and the small signal model is essentially a linear model, we linearize them and therefore, this is amenable for controller design and we will be designing the controller based on the small signal model. So, how do we obtain these various models from the mathematical model using circuit averaging technique will be uh, a significant topic that will be discussed in the course of this course. And uh, once we have attained the magnetic model, uh, mathematical model of the DC DC converter, we shall go on to discuss the uh, controller uh, structure diagram, the controller block diagram and how we go about designing the controller uh, for a given switched mode uh, converter system. This is um, uh, uh, discussed in quite some detail the controller aspect. We discuss about what is the controller band, what is saturation phenomena, at what point saturation occurs, what are the saturation limits, how do we set that, how do we set the control band uh, and uh, uh, these are uh, uh, some of the issues that need to be addressed in detail and these will be discussed in, uh, uh, in the course of the uh, 40 hour lectures. Uh, one of the more popular controllers that is the proportional integral derivative PID controller uh, will be discussed in quite some detail how we try um, are trying to understand the way significance of the proportional part, integrator part, the derivative part and how we go about uh, uh, 
uh, analyzing uh, the system in the presence of these uh, standard PID converters and how we go about designing the PID uh, controller for the converters. And uh, uh, the topology of the PID converter will be discussed along with how we go about implementing them uh, how, uh, with uh, op amps and then also probably uh, in the discrete domain the algorithms uh, uh, these will be discussed. This will be followed by uh, a discussion, a one hour discussion on the pulse width modulation, uh, how we obtain the pulse width modulated waveform which will actually be the uh, basic pulses or the gate or the drive pulses which will turn on the switch or turn off the switch. Uh, the information signal which needs to be given to them. How do we generate this and how do we go about uh, uh, integrating it along with the controller to uh, give the specific uh, gate pulses to the various power semiconductor switches. Uh, this will be followed by um, a detailed discussion on how uh, on the design of the controller itself. So, there are two uh, basic methods, uh, the tuning the controller directly on the system. This is by trial and error and how we go about systematizing this trial and error approach directly on the hardware. This is address first and then the model based we have gone about studying uh, the manner in which we can obtain the mathematical representation of the switched mode converter. And using that model, how do we use first the root locus technique to design the controller? And then um, how do we use the uh, state space uh, method to design the controller? And how to include this controller parameters into our model? Uh, we shall also uh, try to learn a bit about uh, simulation, simulating the uh, model and trying to design the controller iteratively by using uh, simulation tools either MATLAB or Octave can be used and we will try to demonstrate that um, as we go along. Uh, then we shall come to some uh, design um, uh, uh, challenges and examples. How do we uh, control uh, control the output? How do we control multiple outputs in a switched mode converter? Uh, these are issues uh, and uh, challenges uh, that uh, need to be addressed and we will be discussing them significantly. The coupled inductor approach, uh, we will also be discussing the magnetic amplifier approach to control multiple outputs. Uh, we will also be discussing methods to control the uh, current. You see, um, uh, most of the uh, lectures uh, previously uh, we would have discussed how to control the output voltage. We uh, also will discuss methods to control the um, current in the uh, inductor, current control, slope compensation, the issues of slope compensation and how to uh, also um, uh, uh, control the current for uh, a unity power factor application. Then we will come to the topic of uh, magnetics, realizing the magnetics in a practical way. How do we go about uh, making the magnetic components? Again, we will be revisiting the Faraday, um, uh, Faraday's law and the Ampere's rule and try to understand them uh, and try to implement it, implement both the inductor and the transformer uh, for a practical specification. And then finally, we will try to uh, design uh, uh, a few uh, converters for a given specification, design the various components, how we go about designing them and how do we uh, try to incorporate this design uh, in a systematic way into either Octave or MATLAB as uh, design program files such that you can keep iterating it for various specification till you achieve at a optimal design. So, we shall, try, uh, we shall uh, discuss um, uh, this design with uh, the example of a full bridge forward converter. This is a full bridge forward converter, multiple output and uh, uh, 
uh, then later for a flyback converter uh, too. So, in this way we shall try to uh, cover uh, uh, the topics right from the basics that is the components uh, to the various topologies, understanding the topologies followed by analyzing, modeling them and trying to extract the mathematical representation of any converter should be able the generic method should you should with the generic method that we present you should be able to extract the uh, model for any given converter and then uh, apply the control uh, controller design principles and basics that we discuss in this course to design the controller uh, PID controller or even otherwise uh, for uh, the various uh, converters and be able to design the inductors and the transformer magnetics uh, such that you can use them in a practical converter. So, this will be the um, topics that will be covered in the entire range of 40 hours. So, this is the first hour of the 40 hours, you have 39 more hours that will be uh, coming up and I hope uh, the uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge that will be discussed uh, in the uh, next 39 hours will be uh, not only interesting, but also useful uh, to you. The next lecture will be given by Professor V. Naram Narayanan and he will start off with the basics of power conversions. Thank you.